welcome to That's So Nova. My name is Nova. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, how you doing? Thank you for stopping by. Today I wanted to bring you a little Novaween spectacular modification. This is not a heavily modified bag. It is taking two amazing patterns from Ororosa's, the Luna and the Mag uh, Magdalena, and merging them together. So today is not a tutorial strictly on both of them, but how I merge. I will name the pages I'm using in reference so you can get the measurements. And you kind of need both patterns in order to create this. This is one of my favorite things to do is when I buy multiple patterns from the same designer, I like to see how I can merge and make their bag look a little bit more like whatever character I'm doing. Today, we're gonna to be doing Jack. We're not gonna be teaching you about how I modified the panel to make it look like Jack or how I created his fancy bow tie, but instead I'm gonna show you how to use the Luna straps and I did the cross body. She has two where you can do cross body or shoulder. How I use the Luna straps and two connectors on the sign like the Luna to create this really one of a kind custom bag. Um, you will need the Luna pattern and the Magdalena. I will be referencing pages. I have made separate videos before in the past on how to make the Luna and how to make the Magdalena. And I'll put those in the description box as well. And we are going to have amazing fun creating this Jack Skeleton into a Luna Magdalena. So I'm trying to think of a cute name like Magdalena or Luna Magda. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoy and let's get started. Okay, so today um, we're going to be combining, we're going to make the Aura Rosa, how we made it last time. I will link the video in the description box because I've made a full tutorial, of both of these bags I'm going to mention today. I just want to show you what your possibilities are when it comes down to modifications. Um, I'm taking the straps of the Luna because they're absolutely stellar and gorgeous and they're one of my favorite straps and using it on a Magdalena. I'm now what you're going to need to do is you need to have both patterns. So if you have you for the Luna, we're going to be using uh, the straps and their bottom connectors and we're using very similar measurements, except instead of using a three inch for a three fourths of an inch strap, we're going to be, I'm using a four, uh, four inch wide. But the actual measurements itself, whether you're picking the shoulder bag or the cross body bag, you need the pattern for that. These designers work super hard on trying to create their patterns and I do not want to take away from that. Both patterns are an absolutely delight to work with and make. So I highly suggest you getting both of them. Magdalena is wickedly popular and it's two years old. And the Luna is such an unusual shape and it's unique. And it could be so many things from a Cheshire cat to Sailor Moon's moon. It could be a million little different things, that especially if you're into fandom. So I'm making a fandom type bag. Today we're going to go over just how I'm going to make the Luna and the Magdalena meet. I'm not going over my techniques and how I make fandom bags. I do plan on doing that, but that will be a separate video for my membership only. But I'm going to give you a little tidbit. My favorite cartoon, I have a lot of favorite movies, but my favorite cartoon that's Halloween and Christmas is Nightmare Before Christmas. Everybody always tags me on hardware, fabric, or whatever because they know I love Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, one of my children got this book a while ago from Five Below. <laughs> and whenever I'm trying to make a Jack Skeleton thing, whether I'm trying to make a space or whatever, I start referencing pictures so that way I can start sketching out on... Um, what I normally do is take the pattern piece and put it on a piece of sketch paper and then I start um, drawing things out. And I will be having a class on the membership only because everyone's seen the mini Magda where I made Jack's face. And that is like one of my number one requested patterns to be bought. Um, that's one of my number one bags that are little tokens that people always want to buy because it's Jack's face. Everybody recognizes him. So I just wanted to show you that little tidbit. I do get information and, and fills from different people's patterns that make me want to 
do modifications. So we're going to jump right into it. We, some of the pieces are already pre-made because again, I do have the Luna and Magdalena full tutorial, but I didn't want to make it where you're not seeing the whole entire thing. So here we go. Okay. You're going to see me bend down a lot <laughs> because, um, my pattern pieces are on the floor because I had to have my computer right there. We are going to make the second part of the circle. This is my first one. It's Jack suit and it has my um, logo and I hand sewed, well not hand sewed, I machine sewed and cut out each one of these stripes for his suit and his back panel will have the same suiting. So we're going to take this and the other half moon, place them right sides together, pop a few clips in there. And if you are familiar with Orosa, as you should be, because I think I have like, an, she's her pattern, Alexis's patterns are like my bigger, my biggest playlist. Um, she uses a three fourths of an inch seam allowance to uh with most of her uh patterns so three not three fourths three eighths of an inch so we're going to take this over to the machine my stitch length is on a 4.5 i'm using 90 weight thread white from amon i'm almost out i this is my number one thread that i use but number three is going to be my um three eighths of an inch on my plate I'm using the narrow foot that I purchased from Steve from um, Sewing Gold. That's actually where I got all my machines. Steve is very knowledgeable and downright and sweet and nice. And he's a good person. And he's very, very knowledgeable on all the industrial machines that he sells. He I mean, he sells. Okay, so I'm going to snip my threads. And I'm gonna now have a collection of bird nest threads on me. I, like when I wake, when I stand up from any um, sewing job, I have like a, a collective nest on me. I like to take pinking shears whenever there's a curve. And this one's a little bit thicker because it's going over my um, little stripes. That I made for his jack suit. Even if this was an open wing, you probably would see a jack tutorial. I, I feel like he's all year round. <laughs> so what I do, what I do is after I pinked it, pink it, I'm going to take the bag and I'm going to roll the seam and when I, as I roll I'm going to clip and place at the bottom or in the sides of the bag I know a lot of people clip at the top but sometimes just sometimes the lining and the exterior don't add up they don't line up so you if you clip the bottom, you can ensure that all pieces are going to be the same size. And it helps tug down and roll over so you don't see the lining fabric. And we're gonna take this over to the machine and top stitch is at 1 8th of an inch. Now, when you top stitch, you can definitely increase your stitch late to whatever you suit you. Again, as you heard in probably many of my things, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to stitching. I, I only, um, change my stitching if it says like base okay we have our beautiful white stitching we're gonna trim and then I'm gonna grab the back piece, I mean the front piece of the Magdalena, and I'm going to use the clips I used down below and clip this in place. 
and we're going to baste at one eighth of an inch. Now the Magdalena has like a little bit of a, it's very small, but it's a little tent and it's really important to get clip around that. So that way you're not cutting it out. It makes it where you can slip things in a lot easier. So we're going to baste this at one eighth of an inch. So right now is when I'm going to take the time and fold this and even my, my, um, this, I, I didn't have Decaville light and I'm waiting for Decaville light to come in. So I used one layer of, um, I used one layer of, what, uh, Decaville light and a layer of this it's supposed to be like kind of like stiff stuff but it just did not want to adhere to the vinyl so i'm taking some one inch double-sided tape and just putting it in to help stick with it and it's not going to go into my seam allowance so it should be fine but what i'm going to do now is i'm going to find my centers i'm going to match both points of where the end of the pocket is and just take a couple of clips and go all the way down and I'm going to snip a little V in the beginning the front and the top so that way when I do my lining I can do the same thing and it, the bag won't look you know super crooked I mean it still can look crooked but you know you're trying. We're trying. All right. So we have that. We're going to work on our lining. And I'm going to grab the pocket piece. Um, I'm using the same measurements that are in the Magdalena for the slip pocket and the zipper pocket. Um, the only thing I am changing up if I could find it. Because, <laughs> you know, that's how it works when you're, you're sewing. Things just go missing. <laughs> All right. The only thing I'm changing up is I, I ironed this in about a half inch in. And I'm going to put a trim on it. A white trim. I'm going to pop some clips. And I'm going to show you. I'm putting the, I'm using waterproof canvas. And I, my trim is about one and a half inches and I am going to take this over to the machine and sew this at three eighths of an inch this is not part of the pattern that's what I'm telling you because the slip pockets made a little bit different this is this is a modified bag so I'm just I'm, I'm winging it and going for what I would like the reason why I didn't go for a black trim is the lining's going to be black. And I just wanted to make sure the person, whoever gets this lucky bag, will be able to see. We will be able to see the um, <laughs> where the slip phone is. So now I'm just covering over my 3 eighths of an inch stitching. I'm going back to the front. And I'm going to stitch 1 eighth of an inch, inch off of where the the edges that we just correct, just me. And make sure everything got caught up because, you know, it gets the best of us. See, I have a little part that's not caught up, but I'm using white thread on a white backing. So I'm just going to bring this over to the machine and just back stitch and make sure I got it all. You could have used double sided tape, but I didn't. Because sometimes it gums up that needle and then I just have to alcohol wipe the whole nine yards. 
So where we would put the lining in We're going to go to come on. Page 17. And see they you do right sides together and leave a two three inch uh, two to three inch gap and you turn it out. And then on your ruler, you, on your grid, you would I'm going to Find my centers, cut a V, because I want to make sure the V's match the top and the bottom of what I'm going, when I base it together. We are going to go 2.5 inches up. So what I'm going to do is move this. Put my middle of my 2.5 inches up. All right, so I'm going to grab some double sided tape. You can use 1 8 of an inch, I'm using 1 4 because my 1 8 of an inch is just like MIA and. <laughs> Yeah, we're not friends right now. And I'm just going to finger press that, make sure it's nice and on. Because sometimes my double sided tape seems like it doesn't want to work with the cotton. I get it. And I'm going to. Should have did this before, but crease my centers. And then I'm just going to triple check that it's 2.5 inches. And then I'm going to I'm going to stitch this on the way I stitch on my um, my thing you could put rivets in this uh, sometimes if you put rivets in it on the back just put like a washer a leather washer or a vinyl washer or a cork um, so that way it doesn't pull through you can use Decaville light or Decaville heavy or Peltex whatever is easier for you I'm gonna tie up my hair <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna show you how I do this. I start, I'm going to make some bar tacks so that way this area, when it's getting used, it won't pull away. I Once I'm off my um, trim, I'm gonna go one, two in, and then I'm gonna go back to Trim, um, sewing one eighth of an inch. I had to go back because I went off them one eighth of an inch all the way around. And sometimes I will just go do a stitch backwards, a uh, back stitch, so that way I know that area is extra secure. And then I'm back at that area right before I hit the trim. Two, and then one, two. And this little bar tack, it will help um, the area that has stress point not to rip out the stitches. And the reason why I don't put it on the actual trim, it just, it's something I don't do. I just, um, I didn't want, especially if your trim is a different color, not the same color as your thread, you just want to make sure it looks effortless and seamless. So we have this one all finished. So I'm going to take my piece, my, I'm going to take my panel that's going to be, oh no, this, this the pocket is going to go in the front. So I'm, I'm just going to put this panel on the side. 
and grab the zipper pocket. I'm going to find my centers again. and we are going to put in the zipper pocket. Now, when I'm referencing it, you're, you might wanna make notes on both of your pattern pieces. I'm going to follow the instructions on figure 33. We're gonna go two inches down from the grid, from the top. So two inches down, I have a two inch ruler and I have my zipper pocket placket now there's a couple things you could do here you could pop a needle in it or you could take a piece of double-sided tape crease the center real quick and just place it on there and so when you're finding your center When you're finding your stitcher, you just press that down and then, you know, it's not moving. When I, I usually use a smaller stitch length when I am doing a zipper pocket. Um, I would reduce it down to whatever your machine can do. When I'm on my um, 1540, I reduce it down to A2. When I'm on my, um, this Juki, the 5550, I reduce it down to a four or a three and a half. Back stitch beginning and I really wanted to do this video because I do get asked a lot about my modifications and that's why one of the reasons why I wanted to do a membership because it does take a lot of time and effort and I want to show people how they can make their own as well as my, the techniques that I use. I'm by all means not a super professional. <laughs> I just, I think that we all have strong suits in sewing and I one of my strong suits is being able to retain information and the other one is that when I see something my imagination just goes absolutely crazy and I, and I want to Kirch make something desperately so I seen the Magdalena recently and I was like you know what I want to make it with the Luna straps there are so many bags out right now that I want to merge together and normally when I merge something it's usually the same designer with designer like both these patterns are Ororosa if you have both of them great you can follow along if you have the Magdalena not the Luna then you can get the Luna I'm gonna put um, links for both patterns if you have one or another and you need to get both onto the website so that uh, onto my inside the bio description so that way you can purchase them but my biggest takeaway for modifications is take notes Anyone that sews with me knows that I automatically have writing all over my pattern pieces. If you follow along with me and you're seeing like certain Ororosa things, I'll have like highlighted areas dictating things because we all can sometimes be forgetful of what we wanted to create. So definitely take notes. If you're like, oh, I've seen today that Shinova put double-sided tape on her um, placket to make the zipper, by all means, write it down. Write it down on the paper that the project that you wanna do so that you can remember. And the great thing about sewing different patterns is that you start gaining different techniques and it can be a great asset. You're gonna see a couple different techniques within Ororosa's pattern line that I use today in this. So what we're gonna do is now we're going to um, Put this, fold this together, and then I'm going to and I like to do a longer Y. I don't know why. I think it's because like you can sew over the the longer they are, the more you can sew over. 
sometimes I don't make them long enough. I'm getting really close to the corner so that way I can reduce puckery. Uh, the key to this is half sharp scissors. Even if you want to have scissors just dedicated to <laughs> zipper pockets, why not? There's We make zippers dedicated for tape, so why not? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finger press this. Now, waterproof canvas, there's always that big can or can I not um, iron. I iron the, the, the woven side like all the time. The plastic side, never, because it will destroy your, <laughs> or not destroy, it'll just give you that nice burnt, um, burnt, uh, plasticky smell that it takes forever to get out of your room and house. So I'm going to now pull this out. Well, sometimes what I do is I'll take double-sided tape and place it in areas that I know are not going to be stitched over but it'll help keep the pocket flat. You're like, Shinova, you're using so much double-sided tape. I need stock in it. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I also use a lot of glue. Like my husband laughs at me at that because I have like glue for everything. And when I'm not sewing um, tutorials, I generally, I'm, I use glue. The reason why I don't put it on the sides is that we're gonna stitch up and down the sides to close off the pocket. So I don't want to have a whole bunch of uh, sticky DST in an area that I know I'm gonna about to stitch over. That's why you see me make it about one fourth of an inch away from the zipper um, lining because I don't want to have extra. Take your time, move it around, tug it. You're gonna be okay. And see, voila, no wrinkles, no puckers. And it works out beautifully. And I'm just making sure. All right, so it's the same we do with every single zipper placket. You sew on this, you sew on the zipper and then you put double-sided tape and go from there i have a nice jack skeleton head and i want i want to say i got this from zorel or i'm not too sure i think i got it from zorel i had these for a while what i like to do is i like to place the inside on to the middle as best i can and then i'll do it again on this side I want my zipper pull to go to the left, but you can have it go to the right. I've said it before, my daughter's left-handed and she appreciates when zippers go to the right. And I'm ambidextrous and it doesn't really bug me, but I do see that it bugs some people in the, in, in the industry. Just do whatever you like. There's no rules or regulations. It's whatever you like. So, all right, we have this. I'm gonna bring this over to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch on the bottom first I'm going to bring the pocket up so it's going to show out of the exterior and I'm going to um, top stitch now what you can do and sometimes I do this a lot is I will draw like a little one-fourth of an inch line on each box in and this will be my starting and stopping points And let's grab our threads. No back stitching. We're gonna pull our threads to the back. This is white thread on black. It'll be really noticeable if I back stitch. Now, if you're using black, by all means, back stitch away. It will not be seen. <laughs> I just wanted white on black, one, because it's visually striking, two, it's very Jack Skeleton. His suit is black with white stripes, so you can't get more Jack than that. Oh, sorry, I'm listening to my dog. I wonder if he's trying to go over to Roxy to snuggle. He's a real big snuggler. And the funny thing 
is Roxy. She's seven. She is not a snuggler. She only likes to snuggle with, snuggle with Kendall. Like, that's his, her favorite person. Like, when he comes home, she acts like she is one years old. And she's if she did a backflip, I, it wouldn't surprise me at that point. <laughs> but she is so not a snuggler. So I'm bringing, I'm pulling on my bobbin thread. And it, what happens is a loop comes up. And that is your top thread. You just take a needle or an owl or a stiletto and you pull it through. And I try to tie off like three, four, sometimes five stitches. And then you can melt it after that so it doesn't move. You could put glue. You could put double-sided tape on the tail ends. There's a multitude of things that you could do. I'm going to melt it. And when you hit it with the flame you need to just press your finger down on it so it now adheres to the back of the waterproof canvas. We're going to go over to our sewing machine and we're going to try to stitch as close as we can from this over here, go down, I'm sorry, up, across, and down. And if I can grab my threads. All right. I'm going to try to get as close to that mark as possible. Also, if you have black thread in this, like if you were making this, it would help tremendously if you did do it in black. Because I like to bar tack a lot on the, the sides because it's an area that gets pulled a, a lot. But the last, I was like, no, I'm gonna make this more difficult. We're going white thread. <laughs> and then we're going to pull. And then we're going to grab our needle. And pull that bobbin thread to get the, the, the top. Take your time. Not, you know, it, it's not a fun job knotting, but it does give a really awesome result. But at the same time, if you want to backstitch, go for it. There's no, again, no rules, just fun. And that's the thing. I have a lot of fun doing modifications and turning it, um, bags into characters because I'm a, I'm, I'm like a big kid. I like, I was cutting out a bag the other night and it was late. So I was cutting in my bedroom. And um, our townhouse is three stories. So um, the main level is the second story. And that's like our living area, our dining, our kitchen, guest bathroom, that whole shebang. Then you go upstairs and it's all three of our bedrooms, our two bathrooms, the whole nine yards. And then if you go on the very last level, it's our basement. And when it gets cooler or if it's late at night... Sometimes if I'm, I, I don't have a TV in my basement because I can't sew and watch TV at the same time. I don't have that skill set. I'm always jealous of people that can do that. I'm a person that listens to Audible or podcasts, something along those lines. And, um, I, I will listen to them and I can sew because I'm not actually physically watching the, I'm focusing on my fabric and what I'm doing. When, um, when Jack Skeletons, when Nightmare Before Christmas had the sing-along to it, I was upstairs cutting things late at night, singing all the songs. And my husband was like, holy Shinova and her Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> it's, I mean, there's not a lot of movies that transition to ha like Halloween to Christmas. And then you can one up it because then you have the Easter bun um, Bunny, um, all this other, all these other doors that open up so i don't know i think it, it's it's just something about nightmare before christmas it's very it's very tim burton and i'm a huge i'm a, i love his stuff i'm not gonna lie i wear scissor hands beetlejuice i like that hauntingly beautiful 
plus. So I'm sewing up the sides of these using a one fourth of an inch, three eighths of an inch, whatever you want to use, whatever works best for you. This area, this area right here where the triangle is, just try to back stitch a couple times over that because that is a that is a definitely a stress area for the zip um unpulling and pulling up the zipper and i'm just gonna trim this down to one eighth of an inch okay so i'm going to take this um and make sure the pockets the little v's match up And then I'm just going to clip it all the way around. And once we do that, once we clip it all around, we're going to go over to the machine and we're going to um, base the two pieces together using a one eighth of an inch. Always, and what I what I've learned in this too is always have your zipper in the middle, so that way when you're moving the bag and you're putting it together, you're not having to worry about the zipper. So that's one pocket done. We're going to take the slip pocket and merge it together with the front, matching our center our V centers. I'm telling you now, if you cut out V's, it will literally, or have all your points map like on point where you're like, this is up and down. It will save you a heartache, tons of heartache. <laughs> We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do this at one eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around. So before, we're going to start putting, constructing the gusset. So I have, that's not the gusset. <laughs> I have my gusset piece here and it has Decoville white on it. And what am I looking for with this? Oh. I'm going to need my gusset exterior. I created this. Uh, two inch by 19 and a half um, piece. It's a, it matches, it should match your gusset. Um, I have this piece here and I'm, this is the main exterior bottom. And what I'm going to do is this is going to be the first we're gonna we're gonna have to uh, rectangle connectors. So this is gonna be the bottom rectangle connectors, and you're you're gonna see. You're probably like, what is she talking about? Too. You will see how I modify this. 
I'm hoping other people will do it afterwards too. I, I love inspiring people and I, cause I'm always inspired by so many amazing designers and artists out there. You can get All right, so with this, I want, I want this to fold over. I want this to fold over. I want to stop this at two inches. using a candy leather pen and I'm going to grab some double sided tape. Yep. Double sided tape. Man, that one is running out right at the two inch man. If that's not meant to be, I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. So we're going to, Put that on there and then we're going to grab two, I'm using two D-rings. And I'm just going to put this on the two inch mark and fold it over. And I'm going to do the same on this side. And then I'm going to grab some more double-sided tape. I'm not really measuring. I just kind of eyeball double-sided tape. Um, and then I'm going to place it right here on the connector so they can stick down without all the other fuzz. But I'm going to find my center. Kind of finger press that. I'm gonna find, I'm gonna clip this. I should have found my center before I did the double sided tape, but you know, case okay, so are all right. So I'm gonna play a clip right here and just mark the inside. And find my center here too. And I'm going to remove the tape from the strap ends. And I have Decoville light in the center of this. Um, so that way, it again, stress point. I think my dog Loki's coming. Hi, Pop Pop. <laughs> Whenever I film, right? I know, Pop Pop. I'll give you hugs. Okay, you go up upstairs. I know, Pop Pop. You're a good boy. You can't eat my fingers though. That's nibble, no nibble, nibbles. No, that's not for you. That's not for you. I know, Pop Pop. You're super cute. Go lay down. Go lay down, Pop Pop. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go lay down, Pop Pop. Oh. I know. This, that, those are rivets. They don't taste good. No, Pop Pop. <laughs> so I'm going to. I, you gotta go lay down, okay? Go lay down. It's okay. No bunny. No nibble nibbles. Okay, I'm gonna go help him out because he's gonna destroy. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. He he's upstairs now, hopefully cuddling with Roxy. We're going to measure I'm gonna measure one inch away from each 
of the D-rings. We're going to start sewing here at 1 8 of an inch. Go up, across, down, across, and back up. We're not going to back stitch. We're going to take the stitches and pull them to the back of the, um, of the um, fabric. It's 1 8 of an inch of a stitch. The reason why I'm a one inch away, I want to make sure there's enough clearance room so that way I am not um, hitting the bar or hitting my hard work. We'll, we're, we'll be putting some rivets back there. get down to the other side what I like to do is pull on the bobbin thread on the back and pull this thread already and I kind of just hold it so that way I can end in the hole that I begin so I can look more seamless pulling threads I'm just tugging on the other um, bobbin thread to give the loop and it pulls through and then I'm going to take these four threads and I'm going to tie a knot. set them on fire okay <laughs> I was just you just want to melt them all right so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a mark a hole for rivet placement now you could do two you could do one I think I may do two and I'm going to go up like a half an inch from the seam I'm going to grab my hole puncher. Punch some holes. And I'm going to grab some rivets that he was trying to eat earlier. <laughs> Getting the mouths and just pushing them through. I'm getting the females. I'm going to grab my rivet setter that has thread all over it right now and set. It's like I can feel like two little clicks and then I know they're set. Don't like press if you have a rivet setter just 
start feeling there's like a you can feel it it's like two little clicks and you're like oh yeah these are set all right so we have this bottom all squared away now we're going to construct our zipper pocket and I just have the lining to this oh and have our lining to our bottom piece so I did one side we're going to I'm going to repeat it um so right sides together um on the zipper and I do that zipper right sides together at one eighth of an inch The zipper tape I'm using is from Zipper Valley and I'm out. I have to order more black and white because uh, my Tim Burton fascination, I usually go out of it really soon. And then I'm going to grab the lining piece and put it on to the back of the wrong side of the zipper. And then I'm going to put it together at 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so what I do from here is I press the lining, then I'm finger pressing the exterior so they're together. I'm tugging because the zipper automatically wants to um, roll in on itself. It's just how the seam works. So I'm just doing a little tug, clipping, making sure that the exterior and the um, lining meet and then I'm going to top stitch at as soon as I re-thread my machine because I pulled the thread out. I'm going to top stitch one eighth of an inch away. The most part of part of top stitching is don't forget to breathe. I think we all forget that because we want the stitching to be perfect. And um, uh, breathing is kind of important. <laughs> so I'm going to grab my zipper pulls. And again, they're Jack Skeleton heads. This is size five zipper tape, and I'm going to install my zippers. Now you can do one zipper pull. I just really like the way two zipper pulls look. And when I have one in, I just I automatically get it as close as I can to the other one without falling off before I set it in the opposite direction. Trim this thread. I don't want it to be caught up in the zipper pull. Oh. 
and they're together. Then I'm going to grab um, I created um, some zipper tabs. This zipper tab is one inch by one by eight inch. It's two inches by eight inches, two inches wide, eight inches long. I cannot talk today. And I, I folded it in half, as you could see, and then I stitched it. What I used, um, I didn't, I, this is waterproof canvas. It doesn't stretch like a vinyl would. Um, it's pretty strong. Like actually I think waterproof canvas is stronger than vinyl. Vinyl has a tendency of, stre of stretching more than we want to say we do. But for, to make sure ad addict like strength, I put cross grain ribbon or in, ribbons on sale like everywhere because you know, the holidays. Um, and so that way it gives us some extra stability without actually being too much in the, um, too much in your seam. It won't be a lot. I'm going to, going to make these three, three inches. I don't know why I made it by eight. I think I usually just make, straps. I don't want the straps to poke out tremendously. All right. And I'm getting the other two D rings. And I'm going to measure a half of inch and I'm just going to draw it on my each tab. You could do more than half inch. I just get I mean, it, it probably will look better. I, I can go up to three fourths of an inch, but I, it's just, I'll do three fourths of an inch, just five eighths, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to draw three fourths of an inch. All right. I'm going to take this over to the machine and I'm going to take the line that I just drew and stitch over it to base this in place. Now, if you look at the Magdalena, she has, there's two different ways you, you can add these cross body connectors. If you skip over to, I believe page 25, if I'm not mistaken, I have been mistaken before in the past though. The reason why we have long tails is that we can rivet it in for extra security when, after we assemble the bag. So I'm just placing that three fourths of an inch on the end of my um, zipper panel. If I, the struggle is real with the thread. I had to cut my nails because I'm one of those people, if I break one nail, I have to cut them all even. It will literally make me go like livid if I, they're not all the same size. I don't know why it is what it is. Everybody has their little quirks. That's mine. So we have these on. We're going to now stitch. Oh, this is really important part right here. My zipper panel is probably one fourth of an inch longer on each end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one fourth of an inch because I'm not at my cutting table, so I'm gonna show you what I would do in its place. Hello, okay, so I cut off one side, I drew one fourth of an inch using my Westcott ruler, and I am going to now trim it. You could trim it on the line or a little bit below just in case you trim too much then always do below the line because you can always trim more later all right nice and clean and that's now put it on top yes they're the same size you know that's always a good thing so we're just going to oh i didn't trim off that little weird tab thing <laughs> we're going to place the exterior right sides together and we're going to sew this at one fourth of an inch. You could baste it on at 
like one eighth. I just, I, I, I know for just extra security, I just like the way one fourth of an inch feels. Okay. And then I'm going to grab the interior piece and place it right sides together. I have a little tab on this side too. <laughs> um, right sides together, interior with interior. And then we're going to sew this at three eighths of an inch. Now our bag is looking a little whole punk rocker, but we're going to top stitch this at one eighth of an inch. I need to keep all my clips in one location. <laughs> And then I'm just gonna, for some odd reason, my lining did not get cut as well as my exterior. I just wanna make sure everything lines up really nice. No overhang. It wasn't by much, but still, you know. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna go one fourth of an inch. trying to move things off my table so that it doesn't get knocked over when I'm sewing because that happens more than likely than you think. <laughs> and trimming threads. Man, I didn't trim threads up here either. And we're going to now sew the, ex the interior together, right sides together with the interior of the zipper. And we're going to do this at 3 eighths of an inch. to turn this right sides out we're going to unravel top stitch this at one eighth of an inch on the other side kind of squish it pancake style <laughs> So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to center uh, a dot, um, I said a dot, but a mark for the rivets. I can do two like I did and just keep it consistent or I could do one, but I think I'm going to do two. And that's why you keep your tails a little longer so that way you have that extra security of having rivets pass up the rivets have something to go on to Right. 
get four mils. And four female heads. Like all the 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 rivet heads are like on the bottom of this little bucket. And then I'm going to stick the metals in. Get my setter. <laughs> I'm like unscrewing it when I'm trying to screw it tighter. That makes sense. And do this for the other side. And it, it's cool. Like if you had like spikes or um, Mickey Mouse heads or Jack Skeleton rivets, it would be really awesome. Or you can make it endless things. I can, um, like <laughs> I had a request for Guns N' Roses one. That was like one of my favorite requests, by the way. Cause it was like, it came out of nowhere. And I found really cool, like red, um, Ro uh, Rose of Chicago screws and the whole bag just looks super punk rock. And I was just like wicked proud of it. All right. So we have that all set up. We need to find our centers. So we want the seams to match up and this is also if you see something that you need to trim up this is the time <laughs> like this there's a little bit of overhang on this side i'm just going to trim it up because i don't want it to interfere with my um seam allowance there's a little bit of lining on this side too and what you could do is you could just kind of Clip it in place and just trim out the overhead, overhanging, because it happens. It could be like you're an eighth of an inch off on a seam, and in my case, my um, I guess it did not match my zipper panel. So I just want to get all that out of the way. bunch but enough so we have it all pinned up I'm just going to snip some center marks just a little V and what then I'm going to do is I'm going to take it to the machine and I'm going to Base this at one eighth of an inch all the way around. Just one eighth of an inch. Keeping everything together as one unit would help counter out any accidental mistakes of like a piece of fabric not um, connecting. I know it's tedious and a lot of people want to skip this step. Trust me, I'm one of those people. <laughs> but it does really pay off in the long run. If it can prevent you from, you know, not having all the fabric in. And I 
And again, I'm just trimming the extra overhang. All right. And I'm going to do this on the other side. Also keep in mind if you're like, oh, I can't do this. I don't have an industrial. Um, Alexis uses a domestic. She makes all of her patterns domestic friendly. And it's one of the things I absolutely love about her patterns. Because in the summer when my kids were off, I was upstairs in the main dining room using my Bernina um, 1008. And I was able to sew every single bag that... I could that summer on my domestic. All right, so all my markers are here and we're going to grab, I always like to start with the main panel. It's, I don't know why, it's just something I do. We're going to grab and we're gonna first mark, clip. I like to put two clips in the center marks first. Then I push this down and I'm going to clip this. And then I'm going to just go around and clip. Now you could staple, a lot of people staple. And sometimes when it gets to the second panel, I kind of want to staple. And I might, it all depends on how I feel, like if I think the clips are gonna hold. I'm just gonna bust out my clips because I keep reaching for them. And if I have to, I will do a couple snips at like one fourth of an inch to release some of the ease. Don't go more than one fourth of an inch because our seam allowance is um, our seam allowance is three eighths. I'm just trying to make sure it has nice ease. And um, it also could just be you have to create ease because of the fabric you're using. I'm using a lot of water, waterproof canvas and a lot of vinyl. So it's it doesn't want to mold around this circle. So we have to create that ease so that way it can. Just clipping. All right. And 
and then I'm going to bring this over to my machine and I'm going to sew it a scant three eighths of an eight inch, meaning a little under three eighths of an inch in between the one fourth and three eighths of an inch mark. Back stitch. Okay, and when we get to the binding, I'm gonna do a faux pas. But I found out another designer does this too. I like putting my binding on all at once and then just going over the areas I made mistakes on the second try. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> you could definitely try double-sided tape, but if your machine gums up, then it get, that can mess up the whole thing. So before I put the binding on, especially, this is the exterior. Um, I'm going to flip it real quick to see did I catch everything. This is the front exterior and you want it to look amazing. And so, far, oh my goodness, oh, I'm, I'm going to have a hard time getting it. One. I'm just, I can't, I already know. I'm going to be like, this is my new purse. And Kevin's going to be like, show that you have to sell your purses. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, but it's Jack Skeleton. He's like, I know. That's the conversation. This is super cute. All right. So I'm going to turn it back. And I am using some binding that I'm pre when I got this really cool stripe fabric at Joann's and then I just cut a whole bunch of it on a bias and put it on my own little uh spooly thing so I always like to start my um binding at the top of the bag because no one ever looks on the top and I am going to Here's the faux pas. I'm going to just clip both sides, making sure I cover the stitching. Putting the crease. I, I won yesterday when I did this. It varies. Most of the time I have to just go back and fix my mistakes. And you're like, well, if you know you're going to have mistakes, why not do it right? Do one pass the first time or not? Um, I don't know. I, <laughs> I can't give you a reason other than this is just what I do. I seen somebody that they go around with like a doll needle and they just do a couple whip stitches to keep um, the backside in place and then they go around. And um, do the go around and do their top stitching on the other side. I was like, that's pretty cool. I don't have the patience for that. <laughs> okay. And then what I'll do is I'll just fold this one over to butt up against the other one. All right, so here we go. And then what I like to use, and I'm looking for one right now, and I can't find it, is, a, come on, Nova. Come on. I like to use a stiletto to help me. So I can just pull 
over. I just feel like to use a metal one, but I can't find that right now. I have like three of them too. They always go in my way. And this is where you can get to that, like, get more into the three eighths of an inch. Make sure you back stitch. sure this folds over because it's trying not to. And I'm going to stick it back on the other side. And I already can tell that's going to be an area I'm going to have to go over and fix again. That's not a problem. The Magdalena is not super big so I'm not like freaking out about it. <laughs> On the needle down position just take your time and again breathe friends oh okay so I need to fix this area I have two areas I need to fix um, so this area right here it's only about an inch and a half and this area over here so okay so this whole bottom okay I know so I'm gonna bring this back over to my machine and just patch up the areas that I messed up on and then we move on to the second one. So I like to start like an inch or two before the messed up area, back stitch, and then I could pull my fabric over. And because when it's already stitched down, it becomes a little bit easier to manipulate. And then we're going to fix up this area right through here and in here and not too bad. I'm still like that one yesterday. I'm like, yes, you convinced me that I can do it every time, but I was a fool. <laughs> oh, I'm, did I run out of bobbin? Yep. Okay. Well, you know, that happens. That's why we can make extra bobbins. Okay. 
and back stitch and then And I made a mistake, so I'm going to backstitch and then trim my threads. And we have one done. All right. So we're going to now start on the second piece. I'm just going to open up my zippers to help with controlling this. We're going to find our center marks. And again, I like to clip two clips in for our center mark so it can help. I'm just going to clip around. Just going to make sure that the gusset is even. So I'm going to clip the top part all the way up to um, the pocket on both sides first. Then I'm just going to keep bringing it down until it's like, okay, we need to clip the sides. I mean, the, the gusset a little bit to ease it in. Just easing it in and clipping. All right. So same deal, we're going to go around and base stitch this. And your bag is gonna get a little squishy and it's fine. making sure we're all sizes meet, you know, we're all sizes. So just do a little bit at a time, making sure there's no crinkles or wrinkles. And again, if you're 
having a hard time, you can definitely staple. I think because the Magdalena is small, I I don't use staples, but I know a lot of people that do it and they have like the perfect, oh, perfect circle, so. Yeah, you see me squishing the bag. <laughs> I should have like get squishy with it. to trim our threads and it'll be cool what I usually try to do is put this in the light and I fill around in it to make sure that everything's enclosed and I try my hardest to look in the light and just see if there's any um, pieces missing um, I did one time use one of the kids trick-or-treat hot light lights and just threw it in there and I was able to see <laughs> see that there was uh, any gapage but I don't know where the light is now so we're going to bind this the same way I did I'm going to fold the binding in on itself so that there is no raw edges exposed And I'm gonna put it on the top and clip. I love making homemade by bi um, bias binding. I love when it's pre-made too, because that means I don't have to iron. But homemade, you can get like really cool effects like um, the stripe binding. I also like to go on Etsy and buy people's when they make binding. There's just one shop on Etsy that I generally buy a lot of binding for, especially if I'm making a dress or whatever, because she has like the coolest like tool, pink, Allison glass bindings, and it just, I don't know, it gives more stretch and you know it's 100% cotton. Like the ones at Joann's and Hobby Lobby's are usually a 50-50 blend, half cotton, half polyester. And I have no problem with that, but the, you get more stretch with a cotton than you do a polyester. In my humble opinion. I for sure do not know everything. <laughs> Okay, and then I'm just going to cut off a little and then fold over the raw edge on itself over here and clip it. All right, we're going to go back to the machine and we're going to sew this at 3 8 of an inch. Now, because I can go flat or I can go around a circle. Of course my puppy wants to bark right now. Okay, stop. <laughs> and then he goes again. <laughs> it must be the mailman. He likes the UPS driver. I don't know. <laughs> You shall be forever missed. <laughs> I also need stock and um, clips, but I am going to sew magical and I definitely am making room because I know Lauren is going to have tilt clips there and I'm, I'm going, I'm all about that. I'm all about getting those clips. I like looking at pretty stuff while I'm sewing. Maybe 
I'll bring an extra pack back for like a giveaway. I'm, I plan on buying like one or two, well definitely two packs for myself, but maybe I could buy a third pack as a giveaway. I know everyone's not going to be going to Still Magical Expo. So I know, I'm pretty sure whatever's left, she's going to have it on her site. Like Lauren has, she's really good about that. She really wants to have like everyone have, you know, stuff equally. So, but for my channel, I think as of today, we're at 2,000 subscribers and it, 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 my daughter noticed it last night and I am so unbelievably grateful and humble <laughs> that like 2,000 people want to watch just me. <laughs> go around I'm gonna trim and we're gonna just go around the areas that I missed which isn't a lot it's the top part okay we got this we're gonna do this and then we're gonna flip this bag so I'm gonna open it up I have it facing this is the position i use on my domestic too <laughs> but like with the domestic machine my bernina is a free arm so i i can do it but like if i use my brothers there's one brother machine that i it's not a free arm and on the bed i just do this where is my little tool there we go See, this is why I have the zipper in the middle because if it was all the way down, I, it can hit the nail, the needle bar, or something else. Yeah, the reasons why I don't do um, tutorials on my domestic machines, because I know that's probably going to be the next question, is because if you did my room tour, you'll see that I have three sewing machines in here. I actually have to move a old sewing desk to put it in here and then it gets really cluttered and I have no room. So I, I only use my domestic machines upstairs when the kids are home and I still need to sew. So I can help them out with homework or feed the little gremlins, you know, the normal. Um, and that's why I don't. Sometimes I, 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 I have done some tutorials where I put it on my um, cutting board. And it's really, really uncomfortable because the cutting board is pretty high. It goes up to my hip. And I have to sit on a bar stool and kind of like dangle my foot over. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not fun. All right, so... All right, so that we have our interior, and then I'm just going to hit this real quick with a, a flame because there's like little burrs on the waterproof canvas. All right, I'm opening it up. I'm going to turn this. I want to be like, turn this mother out. Okay. And take your time because I have a lot of vinyl. This is not fun. Just kind of squish it. <laughs> little stray thread.
I like to kind of roll where I just did the binding so that it helps with the seam. This is this is pretty cool, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I'm like usually the worst credit, like, oh I could have done this different, I could have done this different, but um uh, I'm pretty thrilled by this. This is now where the Luna the Luna took part in this strap here. We have two straps because we're I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put this on the side. You're a cutie. Um, and then we're going to get our straps. Now, if you have your Luna pattern available for the bottom of the, um, the bottom connector, we used on page 21 of the Luna. I just had a smaller, because the Luna has a deeper gusset, I used a smaller amount. And I think that I said it was 19 and a half. And then I folded in on it, on each other, each strap, two inches. And then I have to look on the computer because I can't find my paper copy of, um, I can't find my paper copy of the Luna. And it's, it, I looked all over this. I know I have it because I, I put pieces. So with this, we're going to grab this. We're going to make strapper keepers. I kept them the exact measurements and I, I think it's going to work because they're a little bit wider than one inch. So we're going to need our side connectors. Let me put this on the side and I'm going to grab one. And this is the second one. We're going to make our side connectors with the Aura Rosa's signature, um, signature, um, strap. She has, you sew one eighth of an inch and three eighths of an inch on either side. And it makes this really gorgeous strap. Um, so I'm going to do the same right now with this. I'm using the same measurements for her um, side connectors, except instead of being three inches wide, mine's is four inch. Double-sided tape. Small gap in between. And we're going to fold this on itself. And I'm going to bring you over to the sewing machine and we're going to do one eighth of an inch first. You can definitely clip so you don't have any shifting. And... So I'm going to hop over a couple stitches to do one eighth on the other side. And before I hop over a couple stitches to do one eighth on this side, I'm going to trim my threads from the previous one so they don't get caught in um, the stitching. I'm going to hop over a few stitches and see if that will be okay for the three eighths of an inch. And we're going to sew. Now for the Luna, there's two sizes of the straps and they, sh she explains that in the cutting chart where you can have a, um, a shoulder strap or a crossbody. For this bag, I'm going for a crossbody. Because it has an adjustable strap, it 
you can wind up having it where um, you can make it the straps short, like shorter. So from this, we're going to have our adjustable straps. We need two. Oh, I forgot the most important part. Instead of having um, strap ends, I make strap ends from my the excess amount of uh, uh, the excess amount of waterproof canvas I used, and I'm going to sew these on, and that's what you see on here. So that way, I don't have to use um, any more hardware than I need to. And it goes through the, um, it's just, it's easier to, it's easier to, um, slide through on your connectors or you don't have to screw on on after. And just getting those little areas melted where they're I didn't trim close enough. I also I actually like the way it looks too. And if you forgot an area, a spot like me, just go back and redo that on the other side. I usually use double sided tape for that too, but again, not trying to gum up my needle. too much <laughs> okay so we have our connectors now we have to we're going to poke some holes get some measuring so we're going to make the marks there is very specific mark uh i can't talk uh, very specific marks that um alexis has that we have to punch and they're on the pattern i'm adhering to the same holes that we have to punch and i'm making my marks first I'm just doing it on the other side. I'm just marking my holes before I punch them. And I'm definitely looking really closely to make sure I have everything punched out like I need it to. All right, get my hole puncher. Oops, that dropped. <laughs> Just 
Can you really kiss that side? So I'm going to grab my bag and I'm going to thread this through thread this through. And my dog's coming. I will be right back. <laughs> okay. Back from a Loki break. <laughs> All right. So, whoa. I wasn't prepared for that to fall down. We are going to grab our strap keeper. And we're going to be following pages. 30 31 we're going to feed this in and we're going to slide our strap keeper my phone keeps wanting to slide too we're gonna just grab we're gonna put we're gonna just try to shimmy this bad boy in first Gray, gray. I promise you, I thought I went over this, but I did not. So I'm going to grab my hemostats. You can get these on Amazon. You can get them probably at any medical supply store too. And I'm just going to not mess up. <laughs> All right. So we're going to kind of shimmy this so it all can meet this. So right now I have this one eighth hole meeting, one eighth of an inch hole meeting the top hole. And I'm going to grab my adjustable strap And feed it in, make sure I feed it in to the right side. Kind of like you do any, um, when we're making an adjustable strap, it goes up and around the bar. This is kind of thick, so it's kind of resisting. And then I'm going to take a, a rivet and I'm going to put it through one eighth, the one eighth of an inch. And then the other one eighth of an inch on the other side, if it poked through, hello Nova, and feed it through the hole. I have to adjust this, I'm sorry. I have to get, I'm trying to get all four holes aligned. Last time I did this, I had waterproof canvas, and let me tell you, that was easier to maneuver. <laughs> and there goes my puppy again. I promise you, every time I start sewing, he's just like, guess what? I'm going to bark. There's one hole. Where is the second one? There it is. And then we're going to
we're going to feed the strap I'll be right back. I think one of my kids are home. Okay, let's see if we can get this part done without a child coming home. So, <laughs> you're going to meet the hole that you punch with the one eighth of an inch, and you're going to slide this tri glider on, or slider, and you're going to put the one eighth of an inch hole there too. You're going to thread your mail piece through all the layers and you're going to find the female cap and you're going to set that rivet i assure you we are almost done i am so sorry for the many interruptions but that's a day in a life of nova then we're going to take whatever whatever um size you picked she has a couple different widths for shoulder length and a couple different inches for um cross body i always say go bigger especially if you're making these for clients and then go smaller so we're going to feed one end through the tri glider and it might be a little snug but hey it's better to be snug than like it being loose and it's not really holding the adjustable part. So I'm going to take my hemostats and just pull it through. Now, as I'm trying to get this to be pulled through all the way, I'm going to bring some slack up and pull it down. And then I'm going to slide this through our strap keeper. So I'm going to put my hemostats back in, grab that waterproof canvas and just kind of shimmy it in it does take a lot um because my i should have probably sewed my strap keeper at one fourth of an inch to give it a little bit more room but i didn't so we're going to work what we have and it's coming And this is where that other bottom connector comes in. What? <laughs> okay. So we have that. And then I'm going to do the same thing, making sure my strap is not crooked. I went for the cross body because I, uh, most of my clients, they always want a cross body. It's, so. Make sure the strap is not crooked and not twisted. And I'm going to take this, and just, whoop. that was a little more forceful than I thought. And then I'm going to grab my hemostats again and Get it through the strap keeper and again to be honest with you you kind of want that snug because it's another it's uh, another way you can make sure that your strap won't just come on out and if it you got a little bit of hairs because you use waterproof canvas you can hit it with a little bit of flame but this this is amazing Holy cow, I cannot wait to show Alexis. <laughs> this is amazing. So we we use the strap connecting and the straps from the Luna and the bottom connector from the Luna and we mix it with the Magdalena and we have a Luna Magda <laughs> and we have a nice modification. And I just wanted to share this with you so that you can create your own little spooky Halloween. This would be cute as a jack o lantern like so many different circular themes, Captain America Shield, Wonder Woman Shield. The world is your oyster, have fun with it. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will put all the information on where you can get the patterns in my bio or I'm so used to saying bio because of Instagram, but in uh, the description box. 
and join if the um, Aura Rosa Facebook group if you have a chance. So you can show off your bag. Feel free to tag me, that's so Nova, um, on any of your makes. I definitely want to see them, especially if I inspired you somehow, way, in some way. If you can like, comment, subscribe. And I know so I say that a lot, but sometimes a lot of my viewers are like 44% of my viewers are not subscribed and they watch. Subscribing to my channel helps out tremendously and helps my channel to be seen and it helps me provide better content. Um, like, subscribe, and comment down below. Share if you think it's worthy. And if you like what I did today and you're like, hey Nova, I want to do something special just for you, you can buy me a Kofi and it's down below. It's you can you don't have to do it. It's just you know, <laughs> I would greatly appreciate it. And I can't wait to talk to you again. Until the next time I see you, have a very good spooky ween, no ween, and stay safe and happy sewing. Bye.